Here's another talk I want to give. Today is August 8th, 2015. Hans Althain, in 1970, earned a Nobel Prize for his work in magnetohydrodynamics, or MHD. And I want to explain to people that inside of stars, they have a lot of electrolytic material. Plasma, for instance, is very electrolytic, meaning we can literally apply MHD in terms of fluids being motors for motion. In other words, we have electrolytic fluids such as a plasma, aqueous ionic solution, liquid metal, or strong ashes and bases, or even salt water. And if you have current, and you have a magnetic field, you can force matter to move. And the sun has a whole bunch of plasma, and more evolved stars have a whole bunch of aqueous ionic solutions, have liquid metal in their interior, interiors, interiors, <laughs> and lots of strong ashes and bases, and even the very old stars still have salt water, such as the Earth. The basic concept behind this, this is a symbol for the, to electrolytic cells, not just one, but many. Here's a positive and negative. This is the north and south of magnets, so you have your north magnet and your south magnet. These are the uh, plates where the electric current can flow from, the charge can flow from this side to this side. And what you don't see is the electrolytic fluid inside the center. The thrust represents the fluid. And to determine which direction this material will be thrusted determines on which way the magnetic field is oriented and which way the current is flowing. So again, we can use Fleming's left-hand rule for motors. It's, this is actually very helpful for me. Always the force is direction of your thumb. Always the magnetic field, the magnetic flux lines are aligned directly with your index finger and the direction of the current is on your middle finger. So if you have a thrust going in that direction, what you can do is just use this. Which way is the magnetic field going? This direction, this is the magnetic field. And you have your um, electric current flowing from the two plates. So. So in order to do that, you just flip this up like that. And then you have your thrust going out the back end of it, which means your thumb, you can't see it, but thumb is going this direction. Which means if the fourth material is going along that axis, it means this whole thing, if the fluid's going that direction, equal and opposite reactions, meaning the magnets and the whole contraption will come outwards this way. And that's how you can induce uh, motion just with electrical and energy and magnetic fields. So really, this is very, very powerful. And the bigger magnets you have and the more current you have flowing, the more thrust you can induce. And basically stars, they do a whole hell of a lot of that. And that's how a lot of the motion happens inside of stars. You can make one yourself just to experiment if you want. I've done this before. I I think it would be a good idea for me to make another video of it. But if you take a plastic container, okay, there's a container. If you're a neodymium magnet, I can't spell neo I, I can't spell it. And you have your battery with the two electrical wires coming down. Make sure the electrical wires are near the battery but don't touch. And you will see that there is fluid there would be a big there would be two big currents flowing, pushing the water in um, in big vortices that are just like just like drawing out a magnetic field literally and they create these two little vortices that will thrust water through the center so it will be more like this and it will cause this to move but you know if you have it taped to the bottom it's not going to move it's just going to move the water and in order to see the water moving it is suggested to pour a little uh, pepper onto the surface because clearly you know you can't see water move very well if it's a small area so just sprinkle a little pepper on it and you'll see the uh, the water move 
unreal. As well, this is salt water. It's not going to work with actual, just plain water because there's no uh, ionic um, uh, material in there to conduct electricity. But that's just the average ionic solution. And that's a very, you know, it's a strong magnet per se, but I mean, it's very small. And you have your current, it's a very small current, but you can still move things. Now, can you imagine what it's like for an entire star to be comprised of completely ionized solutions and a huge amount of electrical current with the giant magnetic fields? Oh yeah, you're gonna get a whole shitload of motion through those, uh, through those fluids. And yes, it is going to cause a whole bunch of convection. Now, that convection will be on the, the top regions of the star and even right below the top where the majority of the, uh, the current is flowing. But uh, there you go. I, I think this is the direction we should be heading for explaining how stars uh, do what they do. I think the whole fusion dogma is uh, it's not leading anywhere. I, I, I think it's, I think it's something of a red herring. Like, oh, it's a fusion reactor. You know, uh, I don't think that's what stars do at all. I, I think explaining stars in terms of uh, MHD or magnetohydrodynamics would be much more efficient, and it would lead to a better understanding of nature and of the astrophysical sciences in general. All right, take it easy, everybody.